and welcome to our regularly scheduled operations committee meeting. My name is Karen Levesque. I am the chairperson of the operations committee. And this evening, the Board of Education will discuss the options presented by the independent consulting firm of Malone and McCroom for the second time. In order to keep the public apprised of what has taken place to date, let us take a moment to share some information. The Wallington Plan of Conservation and Development recommendation for the Board of Education was to prepare for anticipated changes in enrollment patterns and educational programming and to align school facilities with projected need. A recommended strategy to achieve this goal was to conduct the school facilities master plan. This plan would develop enrollment projections, capacity and utilization analyses, and develop scenarios for future uses of existing school and board of education facilities. An independent firm, Malone and McBroom, was engaged to analyze data and trends review the status of our middle and high school buildings and to make recommendations regarding future possible uses. The board has previously reviewed the elementary enrollment and building usage. At a meeting of the Longford Board of Education's Instructional Committee on November 5, 2018, Malone and McCrone presented their initial facility study findings. These findings delineated six alternatives for consideration. The alternatives are preliminary and intended to provide a general understanding of whether the underlying concept meets the standards educational and operational objectives. Any of the alternatives involving construction projects would need further study and planning to develop educational specifications and design and to consider phasing and implementation. Variations on any alternative may be developed and more specific educational enrollment and financial impacts can be examined. Please note that projects that would require significant construction as well as approval by the state most likely would take at least five years to plan and complete. The board has asked additional questions which will be addressed by the consultants tonight. One of the requests was to have the consultants provide an updated status quo number for the meeting this evening. The number will include updated capital and non-capital information regarding alternative one. Once the options have been thoroughly vetted by the board and the choice is narrowed, then a survey will be provided to the community. The results of the survey will be shared with the mayor and the town council with the intended outcome being that the town council will support the Board of Education moving forward with a second level, deeper dive study of the narrowed options. This process is designed to be inclusive and invites groups and individuals in our community to share their thoughts on the choices, with many voices being heard before a final decision is made. Finally, if you review the agenda, there is an item listed for public comment after the facility study update. I thank you for your patience as we are presented with additional information this evening. We just have uh, on our agenda um, a house, one housekeeping item before the facility update. Um, item 2A, committee meeting minutes for our operations committee from November 13, 2018. Are there any corrections, deletions, or omissions to these minutes from the board? Seeing none, we'll take a consensus starting with Mrs. Roccio. Yes. 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 Abstain. Yes. 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 And yes. All right. Item three, facility study update. We'll have uh, the representatives, uh, if they could please introduce themselves to uh, the public. And 
in each of their roles and, and give us the update information that they have. We'd appreciate that. Thank you. I'm Rebecca August, a tech planner with my own group. With me tonight is Steve Stein from Silver Petroselli and Associates and Ed Aaron from Aaron and Associates. And can folks hear what she's saying? So before we go into answering your questions from the prior meeting, we just wanted to review what the six options are so that we're all using the same uh, verbiage. So alternative one was what we call status quo. This was um, continuing to use the four buildings as they are and investing in maintenance schools. Alternative two was to renovate the two high schools. Alternative three was to renovate all four schools and develop into pathways that run from the sixth through twelfth grade. Alternative four was to reconfigure, reconfigure the grade structure to a junior high model, so to operate a five-six school instead of an eight school at Sheehan and then consolidate a high school at Monday Hall. Alternative five was to develop eight high schools, so renovate the two high schools with one middle school that would operate at the land and that would be the central office. And alternative six was to consolidate both the middle schools into one at Sheehan, consolidate the high schools into one at Diamond Hall, renovate that to central offices, and consolidate the closed plan. So the board asked a number of questions after the last meeting, and we're just going to take them one by one. We're going to have Aaron come up first one. The first one was a comparison of the four schools versus running one middle and one high. <clears throat> As you can see, the operating cost of all four schools is $54,900,000. If we operate one high school and one middle school, uh, we save about $3.8 in staffing, 360000 utilities, central office now we don't have to lease that space, and we do need additional transportation estimates. These, uh, those three are not recurring costs because once you eliminate certain things, utilities and lease, they are not recurring for the year on, next year and next year. The only one that may be recurring is transportation because the contract may go up X percentage. <coughs> And Dave Sands is going to talk about the next question, which has to do with the status quo and any specific facilities that were not included in the strategic plan. So, so as part of this question, what we have in the record, we just kind of go quickly through the your next few slides, and you know, the plan is now to go through each of the individual items. So this is part of your strategic plan of capital improvement along with maintenance. There are some fairly large items, such as, for example, here that talks about HVAC design. There's also contemplation of adding on to a gym. In this case, this slide talks about one hall and potential expansion for that. So some of these are, are, are maintenance items. Other items are more uh, capital improvement or programmatic elements of that. What we want to point out is just as this sums up and we can continue to go through because I think we get to the slide at least of the total cost. Uh, since our last meeting, we went back to that list and evaluated the items and the number has increased slightly because we didn't capture all of the improvement items that intended to be there. But the goal of status or our alternate number one is to improve on the capital, continue with the capital improvement needs, at the same time capturing programmatic needs, and then the ongoing maintenance that you would address at all four of the schools. One item that I do want to point out is the third bullet item down at the bottom, which we talked about in terms of potential security of what improvements or enhancements to all four of the schools. That's not part of the one of the 17 million that you See there, that would be an item that you would address and be divided between the four schools. That would be potential hardening of the entryways uh, and uh, site improvements and so forth. That's what that item, if that's not included, is part of the 17 million as a clarification. I'm not sure that was addressed at the last at the last meeting. <coughs> We have a question from a board member, Mr. Bono. That left. 
your last statement. Is that 1.5 million? Yes, that's 1.5 million. That's for the security. That's for security for all four of the schools. Yes, that's correct. It's the third bullet item um, on the slide. We had a question about alternatives two and three renovating high schools or renovating all four schools with themed pathways. Would that bring any operating savings? Renovating the high schools would likely increase your facility efficiency, um, but other operating costs are assumed to remain about the same because you're still operating two programs and two buildings. Renovating all four buildings would also likely achieve some savings in the facility's efficiencies, um, but operating the theme Pathways is likely going to add to your transportation costs using buses students to your school of choice. So that would depend on the programs you develop and the transportation costs to determine. We have a question about alternatives four and five, the junior high model where we need to one middle school. Same question what are the operational cost savings? Um, alternative for the junior high model would achieve savings because you would be operating more uh, efficient buildings in that you group the grades together. So you would have renovated buildings, you have staff and efficiencies, you'd also be getting out of release central office space. However, we can calculate again because we don't know how this would impact elementary schools and what they do with the elementary schools and the transportation costs that might occur in that scenario. For the theme high schools with one middle school model, alternative five, um, there was an estimated net annual operational savings of 1.6 to 1.8 million dollars. And then we had several questions about alternative six. Um, the first was, what about consolidating high schools but keeping two separate middle schools if you were to keep uh, both middle schools, would you still recommend that final hall as the consolidated high school site would work with traffic? Also, for alternative six, what is needed for athletic facilities as a consolidated high school? What is needed for parking? And what about traffic congestion? So <clears throat> on the screen is the very conceptual layout that we have provided. Um, I apologize, it's difficult to read from the audience, but the board does have it in front of you. As you can see in the conceptual layout, um, we are using DAC, part of DAC's site to access the consolidated high school. So Pond Hill runs across the bottom of the screen, Fort Hill Drive runs diagonal at the top of the screen. What we're showing is a greatly enlarged bus loop drop off for Lyman Hall that is accessed from Andre Road through what is currently a DAG's um, parent drop off access. Is it possible for you to use your mouse to, to point out what you're doing? Excuse me, please. I apologize, I don't know what point you're doing. Um, we're, we're, we're going to let the consultants present first, and then if you have comments at the end, we'll have that. We're, we're going to try and hear. We're going to try and hear what they have to say, and perhaps in their comments. There's no way to know what she's referring to. That's what the cursor is asking. If you use the mouse, the cursor on the mouse, kind of highlight the vision of the app that she's speaking of. Thank you for the clarification. We will do that. Thank you. So if you can see the move the mouse in the room, that is Pond Hill Road. This is work. What you're showing in white here is the current line of wall. What you're showing in black outline, which I'm sure is hard to see, is the conceptual consolidated high school, which would demolish these back wings and develop um, three-story additions in this area. What we're trying to answer in this question is if if uh, Dad remained as a middle school, could we do something like this at Lyman Hall? And what we're showing in this conceptual layout is this is currently the parent drop-off access for Dad. We're showing it as a bus access for a consolidated Lyman Hall so that we can develop this large bus loop for drop-off of students and pick up of students at Lyman Hall. We do, we would have to reevaluate this, and obviously this is a very conceptual plan. But we do think there is space here that if Moran 
uh, excuse me, if that continued at the middle school, you would likely continue some parent drop-off curve, but you'd have to reconfigure this in some fashion. And in terms of traffic congestion, you would need to space apart to do our bell times um, more significantly than they currently are between high school and middle school to help alleviate traffic in this area. Um, but we do think that the site can accommodate the traffic. What we're showing in terms of parking, um, we're estimating a need for an additional 200 parking spaces, but that would also need to be reevaluated. Our understanding is the student parking in at Glen Hall currently isn't um, used at capacity on a frequent basis. So we're estimating adding an, an additional 200 spaces, some here next to the existing parking lot, as well as if you remove the current cross loop, you could gain parking here between the main building and the ag building. Finally, in terms of athletics, I'm going to go here for a, section, for a second. Um, there would be a need to accommodate additional teams. You would likely have additional freshman teams, especially in lacrosse and soccer. So a third field would be needed. A uh, fourth field would probably be helpful. They might not need to be full sized. Um, and there is some opportunity for additional baseball field in the back one. If DAG becomes the central office, there are two smaller baseball fields back here. They may be able to be converted to a larger full-size baseball field. For a third field, multi-use field, we're showing this area. Again, in the back of the current rooms of the building as a potential location for a field. And then there would be a new gym added under that concept with the existing gym remaining to serve as an auxiliary. Locker rooms would be updated. Additional tennis courts may be needed, um, and we do not identify the site. There may, there may be room remaining on the site to accommodate like that. Those are the questions that we received from the board. Are there any questions from board members? This is for self. Jim, could you show me on the map where that is? Thanks. That would be positioned uh, right, right within this, uh, right within this area. This is the existing gym, so that would be positioned sort of right in that, nestled right in that area, or potentially here. There's two options for place that either here or here. Other questions? Your previous presentation had better lay out the schematics on the I think I'm Other board member questions with regards to the Presentation. <coughs> Dr. Mendel? I just want to make a comment. I'm sorry. Uh, you don't hear me. Uh, I apologize for um, the fact that, well, I'm not going to. It basically, the fact is that this will all go out on our website tomorrow. Uh, we just got this this evening, so we'll get this out on the website tomorrow. All staff will get this as well. Um, but the thing is, I just would like to say, board members who really do need to use the microphones, because even me down here can't hear what you're saying, so I can imagine they can't hear anything. So if you could just make an effort just to use them, it really would be helpful. And especially if people can't watch this, uh, aren't with us tonight, and they're watching at home, we would like to try to give them the benefit of that. I know it's difficult, you know there's feedback potentially, and I do apologize for that. But the fact is, it really is helpful if people can hear what you're asking, because I'm sure they might have similar questions, and it's only respectful to everybody. So thank you. So please use your microphone when you're asking questions. To the best of our ability, because we seem to be having technical difficulties, now we get that really big buzzing noise, which is kind of annoying. But we'll do our best. And I want to thank the lady and the gentleman for pointing out that they couldn't see that and to uh, make it more apparent. Thank you very much. Um, questions? For more uh, information from the board, Mr. Ross, 
The idea of a couple of questions. First of all, I wish we could receive this a couple of days earlier. I mean, this wasn't possible. Uh, as far as the parking, additional parking spaces for students, you mentioned an additional 200 parking spaces. Currently, how many parking spaces are available at she? At she. I just was saying, uh, in addition, 200 parking spaces can be accommodated. I would, I would think that I'm not positive in the numbers, but I think the numbers, that's a big underestimation of the numbers of students that will continue to try. I, I just don't think that's accurate. Uh, I, I just can't imagine that the parking spaces for the students from Lyman Hall and Sheen would be accommodated after all this insane technology over heights is in the middle of in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wells. A any other commentary on the board? <coughs> None. <coughs> Are folks interested in making Sorry about that. Uh, I don't see anything in here in the additional savings and in the long run where we talk about the increase in prices for transportation. Would that offset a lot of these prices? I know one of the factors we factored in an additional $900,000 for transportation. So the overall savings would be negated by the $900,000 for transportation. Am I correct? Yes, and we factored that in. So that would take away from this overall savings from the other operation. And we gave you the net savings, yes. That's after, yes. after the 900,000. Yeah, well, it, it, was, it was between 500 and 900,000, depends upon you know the year you do it, and also how many kids are going to be, which, which uh, theme you're going to use, because if you have one high school, then children have to be going from each area. The time may have to change. If you have a themed high school, then you have like two different children in the same house going to maybe two different schools. So you have to have enough buses to make sure you get there on time. Thank you. Any further questions, Mr. Ross, at this time? Mrs. Purcell? I'm not sure if this is for them. I just wanted to make a question when we go into public comment, and I don't know if I can say that now, but I just wanted to say when people come up, if they can not tell us what they want, they can tell us what they don't want, because we have to eliminate some. So if there's something you really don't want, it would be nice to know. That's all. Okay. Um, I'm going to write it down and we get to that portion. Uh, with, with regard to busing, if we were to go to one high school, do we have estimates on the time the kids will be on the bus, given the fact that now they're coming from across town? We did not do that uh, survey yet because we don't know whether, at that time how many kids are going to be uh, there in the enrollment. It's going to take more than a half an hour now because you have uh, a half an hour to get to the, to the high schools. Mr. Lara. Um, I talked to uh, Mary Ann in transportation, and I asked her those questions. Um, one of the things she pointed out was that obviously there would be more time for some kids on the school buses to come to Sheena, if Lyman Hall would become the high school. Um, obviously the time would increase. Everything has to be under an hour because of state law. Um, but she also said that right now, these, many of these routes span many areas of, of that side of town. If it went to one high school, they would concentrate on neighborhoods. The buses would just go to a neighborhood and go to, to Lyman Hall. It wouldn't like be a, a route that would go uh, over a large area. A large area. Uh, so that would be one way to address the transportation issue. I'm not saying that's the answer, but that's what I was told. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I want to just make a statement on the uh, status quo. Um, I think we have to keep in mind that for any of those items, we get no state reimbursement. Is that correct? Yes. Um, I walked through both Dag and Moran recently, and my only problem with status quo is that I don't think it addresses all the issues that those two schools um, really need. Um, and that is only my, that's sort of a concern I have about status quo. I don't think these um, capital improvements address all the issues in both those schools. Both those schools need a lot of work. Um, you can't even see out some of the windows uh, at, at Moran. Um, and I don't, I don't think I even see windows on here. But screens. Um, anyhow, I just wanted to make that statement that number one, I don't think it covers all the things that need to be done at those two schools and any monies that we spend, none of it is reimbursable from the state. Mrs. Costello. Uh, Dr. Liz, I'd, I'd like to ask you to um, reiterate what, what you said in the past with respect to 21st century constraints, uh, educational constraints because of the, the buildings themselves. If you could see a little bit about on that and about the, um, some grants that we actually had to turn down or from, um, it wasn't grants, it was um, uh, donations that we had to actually uh, deny, we couldn't accept because there wasn't an ability to get the uh, equipment into the buildings. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, I think one of the challenges, and I, I agree with Mr. Vado's comments prior to Ms. Castelli, is that status quo, while I understand it maintains the four schools, it doesn't get us to really where we need to be. And I think that um, if you visit our four schools and you just do simple, simple maintenance items and simple, simple capital items, we have to address some of the in inefficiencies of space. Um, anyone who knows she in high school and knows the center classrooms, those have not, those predating obviously, and those have never been functionally appropriate for students or staff. Um, they've always been an issue, um, and really that space is, is, while it might meet the needs instructionally because of the size of classrooms, but there's always been challenges. I think there are other spaces in our schools, the middle school classrooms are very small, um, they have a lot of cabinetry, so at the very least, if the middle school classrooms were to be renovated, we most likely would recommend further study to look at removing some of that cabinetry, replace it with flexible furniture on wheels, um, to make this space more available and accessible to, our, to, to students of that age. I think, again, our students haven't necessarily changed in size and shape, but the way that our teachers instruct has. And so we have teachers, um, our teachers are very, you know, involved in making sure that there's small group instruction, that there's whole to part to whole in a class. There's a variation all the time. And I think the space itself is very challenging in those locations. Um, and then you have some of your other areas, which Mr. Mrs. Casale was alluding to, as we continue to look at expanding um, some of our science, technology, and engineering and math, we have had businesses who have been willing to donate some large pieces of equipment that we would have to literally take down walls to get into the building, never mind be in the building itself once those walls have been put back up. So um, there are some structural challenges. Um, and those, but this, I'm not saying against one, this is not about one high school or two. This is about just the reality of the building. This is not about combining schools. This is just about doing, you know, moving the district forward in terms of instruction. So that has, I, I'm not debating that issue. Um, I'm just saying the fact that in order to continue to provide uh, environments that will allow our students to continue to grow in their instructional opportunities, allow our teachers to apply the many things they want to apply in their instruction, the environments do need to have significant renovation. Um, again, the full-scale renovation project is now going on almost 20 years old. I know that it closed out in 2008, but the job was over. So I think people sometimes are still talking about that as just having happened last year or five years ago or 10 years ago. It's 18 years ago. Um, over 18 years ago, we're looking at 20 years almost um, that that project occurred, uh, when that project occurred. It was $70 million, yes, it went across 11 schools. Um, and that project, there's a list I provided to the board and I can make available on our website as well of what was done in the schools, and it was a lot of code compliance, there was a lot of systems at that time. It really was, except for maybe space like this, it wasn't a lot of um, adjustment to instructional spaces. 
especially I go back to middle schools. If you go to one side of each of those middle schools, they really are very much the way they were prior to the renovation at that time. Um, and so, again, I'm not speaking about two schools, four schools, six schools, whatever. I'm just speaking about the fact that the environments need some work. No matter what structure the town and the board decides, we need work in our schools um, to help support the instruction that our staff is working so hard on, um, and most importantly, to provide that environment for our students to excel. Mr. Lotto. Uh, Mr. DeFool, can I ask, on the windows for Medag and Moran, there's a figure of 1,063,000. Is that what is exactly that uh, That would have been. That, that would be our next window project. It's uh, the two middle schools and Rockville Elementary School. Uh, Replacing all the windows? All the windows, uh, unless they were replaced uh, post uh, 1996. If they're up to today's standards, we wouldn't take them out just for the sake of taking them out. So if they're thermal pain glass, they would stay in place. Uh, so it would address uh, basically the windows that go back to the original construction of the building. Okay. Because I did notice there were um, a few classrooms that were in that were not being used because one of the reasons was water getting in. And I, I think it was to the windows. Yeah, it was to the windows, yes. Um, and that's like a waste of space. And there are other classrooms that are like half the size of a regular classroom that teachers were in. This is what I mean. There are, to me, there, there's more than, there are more things to be done than what's on this list to make those schools um, what they should be. Um, and I'm all for keeping two middle schools, but they need to be fixed badly. This is Purcell. I just want to add to that I went on the tour with Mr. Rado too, and I was surprised some of the conditions that the middle school teachers have to work in. He, he mentioned the really small classrooms. I don't know why they were done initially, but you have some big classrooms and really tiny classrooms, and so you have students squished in there. And then the other thing is we have science labs we came out that we could probably do six science labs, and what happens because of the restructuring of the middle school is with the two teams, we don't need as many as we used to. But now you have classrooms in half of a classroom, and the other half is, is lab space that's not even utilized. If we can take things like that out, we can open up those, those things. There's not a structure stuff, I agree with Mr. Lava. I was completely shocked when I walked through school to see what kinds of things need to be fixed. Okay. I, I don't want to turn this microphone on, but can you show this just because I don't want to turn it. I'm afraid to turn this microphone on, otherwise we'll all get blown out. So um, I, I appreciate that the um, cost of renovations uh, are our estimates. Um, and we kind of articulated this evening that whatever plan potentially we choose down the road, it could take up to say four or five years to actually realize. I'm wondering in terms of construction costs, obviously um, it, we all know what, we, what, what something costs today is going to be different in five years from now. So can we even just use, is, in the construction world, do you guys use um, a percentage of increase over, you know, just to get guidelines to say, every five years or every four years. You know what I'm trying to ask is, because um, I, I often hear um, that, you know, when, when we did our past renovations, they went up, some went over budget, some areas. And I think some of that speaks to the timing that it takes in order from when you initially come up with an idea and the town all agrees on the idea, and then when we actually end up paying the bills, most of the years can go by, and what's the implication of that from a financial perspective? Construction, uh, the construction industry begins every year, or at the end of every year, begins to project where the escalation will be. In the last five years, construction average has gained at a rate of about three to four percent, so that would be compounded on your construction costs. So once you, your next steps and wherever you end up being when you get into that schematic design phase and you planning on getting to an end date, that's when your design team and your construction team can predict that escalation cost right now. 
Right now we're looking at cost as of today that's based right. in here. Can you speak up? Don't know where that will be. So to answer the question again, construction costs will range about three to four percent. Uh, and that will be compounded interest every year going forward. So three to four percent a year is what would be a, a thumbnail to use. That, that is correct. Okay, great, thanks. Mr. Reynolds. So far, okay. All right. Um, I brought this up at the last meeting about state uh, reimbursement, the percentages. Have you looked in the past to see has there been um, changes, you know, dramatic changes? I'm not talking about like a percent or a half a percent, but something substantial where we need to kind of be aware, you know, of what the future is going to hold for us. Because, I mean, I see this, you know, numbers are pretty specific of um, 70,000 or 80,000. I mean, if it takes us three, four years to finally make a decision, so, I mean, how long will it change that reimbursement? That's actually my question. I mean, the percentage. State reimbursement, that your rate does change over, over time. There's a formula that's worked out from the Department of Education. Um, in general, it remains somewhat at the same reimbursement rate. I think if you go back in history, you may even see where you are. Maybe Dr. Minzo can comment more on that. But just from school construction across the state, everyone's reading the first and adjust accordingly. One of the key indicators is the free, reduce, free and reduced lunch rate of the school district. It's one of the many indicators. Our rate at our rate has actually gone up over the last nine years of reimbursement because our free reduced lunch rate is over 31% this year. Um, nine years ago, 10 years ago, we were about 16, 17% free reduced lunch. At that time, when we were doing the roofing projects across the district, our reimbursement rate was 50.17%. Now I think we're estimating at close to 53%. It doesn't go up drastically, but it did go up a little percent as a, a cost adjustment statewide. Um, the key thing is, while well, you can say a reimbursement is 53%, there's a lot of in ineligibles that come in. So when you actually do a analysis across your whole reimbursement rate, you're actually potentially looking at more of a 49 to 50% because depending on the, um, the amount of ineligibles. And that's calculated by the state working with the architects and engineers. And that happens, it really happens traditionally in every project. It's not where it would be unique to Wallingford. It's just that sometimes you start going into areas of construction, especially when you do renovate to new rather than build to new. Renovate to new, you find things you might not thought you were going to find. And as you find those things, depending on what you have to do to mitigate those circumstances, it might be fully re uh, reimbursable or it might be partially reimbursable. So um, again, you can't really put a pin in a number right now and expect it to stay. Uh, it, it is going to be variable over time. Thank you. Mrs. Mrs. Corso. Um, we've heard a lot about the space configurations when we consolidate high schools and what the classrooms would look like, but what additional programming that would benefit our students would we anticipate offering as a result of consolidating high schools? I think that, uh, again, that would be to, be to be determined as we move forward. I think that we often hear, and we did a, a, a SWOT analysis with our administrators on strength, and this is opportunities and threats of each option. And I think there are, are there's strengths and weaknesses to each option. There's some threats as well, um, one of which is tradition, um, which we understand and we appreciate. So we have to keep that as in, in context. But I think with one high school, we often hear, and what our administrative team um, had before it is that sometimes you're able to expand programming because you can uh, identify resources in one location rather than multiple. So you could potentially have expanded opportunities uh, in languages, you could potentially have expanded opportunities in some of the elective courses, um, in some of those career development opportunities that also prepare students for college and life after high school. So those are potential opportunities um, that you can see growth in. Uh, I think athletics are one area that we did collect some data and we do see uh, some reduction potentially in participation, but what we would look to, um, and I know our administrators have put this forward, 
as well as community members who's potentially adding some sports that get asked for um, quite frequently, like ball, boys volleyball, um, we've had wrestling, um, girls hockey, uh, we've had also fencing has come up um, by group of students a couple of years in a row. Um, so there's potential there. So I think it's a matter, again, it's, it's ultimately a community decision, but it's a matter of figuring out with one high school you potentially get deeper into some of those areas. Um, and in, in return, you potentially will have um, a better use of your, and more effective use of your staff. Mr. Braccio. Thank you. Several of the alternatives um, use DAG as central office amongst other programming. What programming would be for special ed at DAG and what age ranges? Is this just for the school children to and through adult ed? And how would the transportation for special ed students be accommodated? Um, first and foremost, I have to say, um, and this, I think, is a collective uh, agreement of the central office as well as administrators. We do not um, support one middle school um, as an initiative team. Um, we do not feel one middle school is appropriate because it's will be over or close to 1,500 students. It will be the largest middle school in the state of Connecticut, um, including five grade schools. Um, so, that option of dad becoming central office, unless that our staff wants us to come and visit and, and have a satellite on us. We're happy to do that, but it won't work. Um, so we're just, I have to say, I'm a middle school person through and through, and there's no way that that will work with one middle school. In, in my mind, and, and I know I'm going to show yourself the same way. Did that answer your question, Mr. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Corso, thank you. Uh, that being said, I'm curious if we kept the two middle schools, or Moran moves into Sheehan if the possibility of consolidation happens. Is there room at Sheehan then to um, add central offices back into there? If, if Moran were to move to Sheehan, yes, there would be definitely space to make central office there as well as it, um, potentially some other services. Um, I believe that, that that would definitely accommodate the space. question um, if somebody can elaborate on the state law that says they can't be on the bus for more than an hour currently I would have to pull that information uh, to be honest I know Mr. Bob mentioned it but I do believe there is a statute I could pull that and provide that to the board mm -hmm. if I may go back to your last question about if she and um, potentially if it were to become the new Moran, so to speak, um, the options in this plan would not, it wouldn't be, you could do barely capital improvements and renovations. That would have to be renovated to new, at the very least, because you're taking a high school and now you're trying to configure it as a middle school with a teaching structure. So there would be additional expenditures that I think you would need to investigate. And that's why, again, this is a very high level study that we're hearing about tonight. And the next level would get into more granular if that was one of the options and we'd be able to come the whomever is the consultant would come back and be able to share that. Um, so okay, so we all know how difficult it is to get from one side of town to the other at five o'clock when I have to go to Fragment for practice when I see. Um, however, I think or I'm wondering if traffic studies would be included and or um, road analysis, things like that, that be included moving forward? Well, we would, have, we would be writing another specification for another um, RFP to go out. So again, as I put out in my message to families and teachers and board members, um, tonight, really, and whenever you choose to narrow the field, if you choose to narrow the field, it's just merely narrowing the field to then be discussed at a later date based on more information. So as a board, and most likely we would hear from community input tonight on some of those questions. We want to make sure are investigated at a deeper level in that next level of um, research. Oh, 
other questions from the board? Is there further comment that Central Office would want to make uh, at this time? I think I'm good. I think I said that. So. One more time, board members, any further questions before we get to uh, Mrs. Costello? So, so I just want to um, also point out, I think, on what you're saying is that we're not tied to six options. We can cafeteria style basically um, select certain things. So, for example, if we wanted number three, which would be to renovate, in my mind, renovate all four schools to do but not in pathways, that's a possibility. I just want to point that out. It's a possibility. That could be an option. We don't have to do pathways. We have to just restructure those, we renovate to do those four buildings. Correct, Dr. Okay. Thank you. Just for clarification. to the consultants. They listened to a wide range of groups of individuals, and their goal was to actually do what you just came to the conclusion you could do, which was to give you a, a general set of options that then you could pick and choose parts. So they were trying to listen, and I know pathways did not come up at central office or with an industry, it came more from the parent groups that happened. Um, so they wanted just to capture that and honor that because I asked, the, asked this question after the report was provided. So they wanted to capture and honor that so somebody who, if a group put that forward, they felt they were heard. But that, again, it's, it's, it's basically pick and choose the items. Mr. Purcell, so if we want to option three without the pathways, would the price be the same and the additional transportation would not be there? Correct. Okay. What was that, Patty? Could you please repeat that, Mrs. Purcell? Say it again? Yes. Okay, I guess it's not fast. Sorry. All right, if we want option three, which is 612 pathways where all four schools have been renovated, and we got rid of the pathway part and just had all schools renovated, the price tag would still be the same, but there would not be an additional transportation cost because we're not busing kids all over the town. Good afternoon. Any other remarks by the board or questions that you may have before we move to the next board? Please state your name and address when you come to the microphone. 
and be mindful that uh, you should be a long resident or your child must be enrolled in our school district for commentary. Um, we'll start with the, the facility uh, study update sign-up sheet first. So the first individual that signed up was Mr. Rufael. And so when does the time start? After, After I... <laughs> Hi, my name is Luke Fiala, um, Father Gino Lane, Wallingford. I'm a teacher, third grade teacher at Rock Hill Elementary School, and I'm also a parent of a past Wallingford student. I'm the proud grandfather of two who are coming into the Wallingford school system, and I'm also the president of the Wallingford Education and Teachers Association. And this is too short. <laughs> I might Don't stop me yet, but I did uh, raise this 18 font. This is only a short paragraph, but it is five pages long, so I think there was all right, we're going to try making an adjustment to your time, Mr. Fiala, because of our technical. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm good. I'm good. No, no, I'm good. I appreciate it. Don't lose that. So that we can continue to move capital projects forward. 
The fact is that any plan chosen will have costs and savings, both expected and unexpected. Although budget concerns are paramount, student success must be our top priority. Buildings do not create student success. Solid, consistent curriculum and small class size are factors. In conclusion, our students and staff have endured change upon change, all touted as the best solution for success. However, we must carefully examine the outcome of those changes to evaluate their impact before proposing yet another major reconfiguration containing no proof of its ability to positively impact academic success of our students. District's educational professionals will continue to do their best to serve our town students daily. This happens as we speak and will continue regardless of the classroom style, furniture, or facilities. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fiala. The next individual on the list is Kira Reed. Kira Reed. Hi. Um, my name is Kira Reed. I'm a freshman at Valley Hall High School. Um, ADI Dallas Street. Um, okay. So, in my U.S. government conference class, we did a debate on um, the alternatives when they first were open to the public. And I chose alternative six because it saves $4.4 million annually and it creates diversity for students because they have more peers to interact with. Um, some concerns with alternative six for sports and extracurricular activities. Um, I am trying out for the softball team in spring and we barely have enough players for a JV team. So combining these schools would benefit us and we would definitely have enough players for a freshman team and a JV team. Um, some other concerns were time to get from class to class and um, the cross town rivalry along with powder puff. Um, there are many other ways to do powder puff such as seniors and juniors and Wallingford versus other towns that only have one high school. Um, as a student, I would prefer to keep old schools, but if you look at it from all the perspectives, enrollment is dropping, and I feel combining the schools is our best option for the students and their education. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reed. The next speaker that's signed up is Mark Britton. Uh, good evening, board members, all the teachers, community. My name is Mark Britton. Um, I uh, hold Dr. Shakur's my address, and I have three students in the Longford school system. Uh, one in Dye Middle School, and two uh, at Moses Light Beach right now. So it's encouraging to see that we're looking at six different options. I think it's fantastic to bring us out here. Uh, it's a really positive time for Wallingford. Um, currently, my line of fund is I support uh, two middle schools and two high school options. Uh, for many reasons. So I can also take you that. Uh, potentially the renovates and new options, but I think more importantly is maintaining the diversity of two middle schools and two high schools options. Uh, when we look at this, we're looking at investment not just for the students, but for the town in general. Right? Uh, when people move into a new area, they're looking for a great education system, right? good businesses. A long run has a lot of positive aspects to it. Um, and one of the things you're looking at is not only location, right, not only low rates, uh, but what's the education system like. Like, Wallingford is uh, in a pretty good position. Uh, for those who aren't aware, uh, we're in a district, district, district reference group D, uh, which puts us with towns like Rocky Hill, uh, Newington, Southington, uh, North Cranford, Cranford, etc. Most of those towns are half the size of Wallingford, which is why they have one high school. <coughs> Uh, many of them only have a population of only 15,000. So, and when we compare ourselves to our surrounding towns, Meriden, Haddon, uh, Cheshire, North Haven, North Grantford, 
uh, in Durham, um, we do okay, but if we look at some of the statistics uh, throughout the state grade design educationally, we're five out of the seven towns. Um, and we can do better, right? We can do better. So I think when we go to a consolidated high school, we look at the consolidated high school option, there are some advantages, which Dr. Menzel mentioned, and our, our student uh, mentioned as well, which are true that there's increased curriculum activities we can do, uh, possibly increased sports. What we lose is uh, a lot of intangibles, right? When we look at um, smaller schools, right, they have decreased absenteeism. I'll try and hurry here. <laughs> Decreased absenteeism, uh, increased climate, increased security concerns. We look at smaller, not concerns, increased security with the smaller schools because you have a better relationship with your students. There's less places for them to hide uh, or get lost when I say hide. I get lost in the system. Right. If I find out I teach in there, I just went through two innovations. I teach at high school level. I come to a 1,200 uh, student school right now, so I do have some experience with, with a, a large high school. Right. Uh, and we get increased parental involvement. Also, uh, specifically when we look at the middle schools, I think when we go from uh, elementary school model to middle school model, if we were to go to one middle school, to have our kids have that shock in their system, uh, to go to a 1,500-person middle school, uh, with all the physical, mental, and moral changes that they're going through that level, I think that would be a huge service to our Thank you, Mr. Burton. Uh, the next, uh, we have two folks that have signed up together. Maybe they're a team of speakers. Um, Eliza Allardyce and Melanie Rosacci. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Melanie Osachi. I live on 9 Platt Drive here in Monford. I have three children, one who has graduated and one that is currently a freshman at Sheehan High School and one that is currently in fifth grade at Fritz Elementary. Uh, today we are here to talk to you. There's four parents who had sent ahead to the board a letter um, that we hope you've all had some time to review today. Uh, we just want to read pieces of that letter. Uh, we put together some research, um, and the research suggests that smaller high schools function best academically and socially at a romance around 600, 150 students per grade, which is considered the natural group size of humans. Our schools are close to those numbers now. Smaller schools produce more student satisfaction, higher graduation rates, increase athletic participation, and foster stronger connections for students and staff alike, as well as the community as a whole. There's lower rate of absenteeism, dropout, behavioral issues are considered, and schools are considered safer because students feel less alienated and more connected. We definitely feel that now with our schools and we want that to continue. We feel that having two middle schools and two high schools will make sure that that continues to happen. Teachers also feel they can make more of a difference with students in smaller schools. Since the need for mental health treatment among students is on the rise, we are against decreasing staff in our schools. Option six has listed having a significant loss of staff. We believe that students with mental health issues will be more readily identified in smaller schools. While smaller schools may have a higher cost per student, they have a lower cost per graduate due to lower dropout rates. Currently, Sheen and Lyman Hall both have graduation rates of 94 and 95 percent, respectively. We're all concerned with school violence and mental health issues. Although the size of the school is not the cause of violence, Research shows that smaller schools are less likely to experience acts of mass violence. Also, transitioning from a smaller, more supportive school to a larger, more anonymous school may make pre-existing mental health issues worse. We're also concerned about the transportation issues. 
such as cost and expense of time commuting across towns if the schools were to be consolidated. For parents who need to pick up children in both middle school and high school, it may be nearly impossible to get across town in time with traffic. <laughs> Additionally, the current option three is the only option that explicitly notes increased transportation costs. It lists the estimated increase in cross-town transportation of 525000 to 900000 when in actuality all the options one and two would create the need for cross-town transportation, and therefore transportation costs would increase in all of the other options. Finally, our tradition of two middle schools and two high schools has created a unique sense of community here in Wallingford, resulting in a small-town feel. It is one of the many reasons families choose to live in Wallingford. Our students have wonderful opportunities to participation on a broader level. We have twice the number of teams enabling more students to have access to this invaluable experience. We believe that combining our schools will reduce these opportunities for our children and will have a negative impact on their middle school and high school experience overall. We hope that you will consider keeping our schools the way that they are and renovating them. The traditions are rich in this town. People really choose to live here because of those traditions. Yes, Powder Puff is one of those traditions. There are other ways to do that, but traditions are what make us who we are. We have traditions in our family, and we have traditions in our community. Hello. So 
So I was going to write down questions to ask. Sorry, I'm going for your Mercury style here. <laughs> um, Jeff Hill and I on our drive, class of 1996 at Lyman Hall. Uh, it wasn't that good. <laughs> so back then I was really shy. The only time I spoke in front of people was there in the chorus. And I was one of those people, I remember my mother telling me, one of my teachers told her when I was a senior, I fell through the cracks because the school was big at the time. I wasn't a troublemaker, I wasn't a pot smoker, I wasn't a jock, I wasn't anything like that. I was smart enough to do nothing and get B's, but I never really tried, so I slipped through the cracks. And it wasn't until much later that I really tried. So going to bigger schools, people like me are going to be left behind. You know, numbers are numbers, and we can look at it and say, okay, 15 million, but it turns out to be 45 million. What happens if 117 million ends up being 300 million? Who pays for all that? Something that looks good in now, once everything starts, it's probably not going to be as good as it actually will. You have to look at what emotionally your heart says. And for me, it's always, and you know, the fine folks we have here that are the teachers, I have a 10 year old and a 3 year old. 10 year olds already at Pondo, 3 year old will be at Stevens, and then Pondo, and then hopefully if they still exist, Dad and Len Hall. <laughs> and we trust our children with these folks. We want to give them the best so they can give us the best. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Chilton. The next individual signed up to speak is John Pinkus. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. John Pinkus, Patton Court. I have three small children. One of them is in Moses Y, and the two will follow after. So it's absolutely impactful because whatever happens, they will love to see, hopefully. Um, so what I'm looking at, and, and what many people are looking at, is a summary scorecard and then many flip to the back. And what I'd ask is if we can enhance the summary scorecard and add upon some questions that folks have asked. So for example, um, when we talk about construction costs to the town, if there's any way to say, what does that mean down to the mill room? Is this gonna be a special assessment? Is it gonna be an ongoing cost? What's it actually gonna mean to the taxpayers of the town? So they can look at everything on, on a balanced uh, basis. Um, Additionally, as it was brought up, the operational costs, uh, the busing is only specified in one, but there's likely a, a put or take in each of them, uh, if that could just be looked at. Um, and then also, if there's any way to look at what are the expected average and maximum class sizes um, for each of these and student-to-teacher ratios, um, so that they can also be assessed uh, when we look at the options. I'm being repetitive, this is my last point. Um, I know a lot of folks in here want status quo, but I think as it was brought up here, alternative three without the pathways might be a better status quo. So just one for that moment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pinnis. The next individual signed up on the list is Mary Reed.
something called personalized learning, which um, I'm sure a lot of you know, and an article from Corvus Compromise, which is rethinking schools. And in general, every ideal way, which is ideal, is if um, we can be in touch with about 80 students a day, they have a little more personalized connection, personalized learning, and anything that makes a student feel more connected makes less students feel on margins. And the students that are, that are on the margins are the ones that we want to bring into the schools. So two high schools, in my opinion, and a lot of the data seems to support that, is a safer way to move forward. We're doing a lot without us training, which is great. We're doing a lot of things to make our schools safer. And it appears to me that any alternative that has two high schools instead of one is the best option. Thank you, Ms. Green. The next individual signed up on the list is Drew Bernard. Sound. 
Uh, my wife and I are both in education as well, myself and North Haven, my wife and Mary. Uh, the question that I have is, does the Board of Education actually have a policy or a contract for uh, class size uh, ratio? And, and so what is that number? We do have guidelines, Mr. Uh, Dr. Mantel will deliver Yes, at the uh, pre-K to, well, K to level, uh, no larger than 21, 3 to 5, no larger than 23, middle school and high school. Middle school has actually been more challenging than high school, to be honest. Um, so middle school, we had classes, unfortunately, that have gone uh, recently, 28, 29, 30, because of the team structure. We have tried to add additional sections to assist with that. High school, again, classes, traditionally, we try to keep them in the mid to upper 20s the most um but we have classes that are of course running some of our AP classes that are running at 8 and 12 and 14. Um, so i think one of the things that you bring up with class sizes in the report and this was i think just to simplify the data the consultants because this was my question to them as well was that they put that class sizes would each across the board 25. that's unrealistic to think that there's going to be class sizes of 25 across the board because of the fact that we don't, we have some classes that are under enrolled, some classes that are over enrolled. So it's up to the board to decide class size, not the consultant. Um, and it's up to, you know, we always are adding teachers um, constantly throughout, we did it over the summer. Um, that's why we don't give out our class list until later um, than usually. Usually we did the step up ceremony about four years ago at the end of the school year, but then we found that we had to add teachers and then kids made connections with their teacher. And that wasn't a good thing. So. We're adding staff throughout, um, but again, the class size is a board decision, not a consultant decision. Uh, so I guess that the uh, follow-up question would be, uh, if the one high school concept came to fruition, uh, we keep hearing a uh, bigger class size and wants and stuff, which I, I personally agree with as well, uh, would that affect numbers per class? The it shouldn't because the fact is that we would still maintain the class sizes that we have now. Um, so I think, that, and again, I think the consultants might agree to disagree with me on this, but when we look at the number of estimated staff reductions, I think those are highly overestimated um, just because of the fact that we have some very nuanced classes that still remain small. Um, so that's why if this were to move forward as an option, um, a deeper dive would have to occur to better understand the ramifications. So I would just caution that piece of it because we still, our administrators, our teachers, still hold the responsibility of leveling out classes to the best of their ability and keeping them at a level that Wallingford has known and supported. Um, our classes have been maintained over the last several years at relatively good rates except for bubbles and you know they happen at the middle school and they happen at both. Um, there was a year that there just happened to be a lot of little ones. Um, so we do try to adjust. But it, again, wouldn't necessarily, one school does not necessarily equate to larger class size. It should. Uh, last comment I'll make is in terms of marketability for whatever program we go forward with, uh, I would suggest that if parents are looking to move into the area, one of the things that they would highlight is transportation. And if they had to consider moving to Wallingford and seeing that, you know, transportation would be cross town with a consolidated high school, middle school, whatever it may be, that that could ultimately be a, you know, a showstopper considering moving to another kind of one. That could be a strong consideration. Right, thank you. 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 The last uh, person signed up uh, to uh, make comments is Mr. Gesser, David Gesser. Good evening. Uh, okay, you're doing good. How's the time going? I'm good. <laughs> okay, my name is David Gesser. I live on Grandview Avenue in Wallingford. I'm very proud to say that my two daughters are graduated from here. One is a special educa education teacher along the shoreline. The other one is a senior vice president of the bank. 
So they're both doing very well. I'm very proud of the education they got here. So I thank uh, those of you that were involved. They don't ask dad for money anymore. The bank and guess his dad is closed. Um, I'm looking at the numbers we've got up here. I've been involved in a few construction projects uh, in the town of Oliver. And I look at the estimated construction cost of the town, uh, which I think is inappropriate. I think we should put the estimated cost of the project so people get an idea of what it's really going to be. And if you're looking down the road, the estimates are usually 20% lower than what the actual costs come in, especially if you look at a few years down the road. So some of these costs, uh, you know, they are high in the sky. Uh, I'm looking at uh, Merrick, they just did uh, $200 million uh, invested in their high school. And when I saw those test scores came out, in you know, four towns, Cheshire, Southington, Wallingford and Merrick, and Merrick was on the list for test scores. So $200 million didn't, didn't exactly uh, put them at the top of the heap for test scores. Uh, I like option number one. Uh, it's uh, $16 million roughly, will be more if you, by the time you get there than $20 million. I think it uh, keeps the small town uh, schools uh, in effect and the smaller uh, number of students. I think it's probably the most effective way to go. Uh, it doesn't include the huge transportation increase in costs, and uh, I think it's the best alternative. I know I'm one of the gray hairs in the room, and we see 537 people leaving Connecticut, and it's not just because of the winter, but because of the cost of Connecticut. Uh, Wallingford is facing the E6 million dollars in utility project. If you add a couple hundred million more, you're not going to have to worry about educating kids because mom and dad are going to be leaving. So, I have to keep in mind that there are some of us that are on fixed incomes now, unfortunately, who are retired, and uh, Social Security and pensions don't go up, and they stay the same. So, uh, in the interest of the kids, in the interest of the taxpayers, uh, uh, in the interest of the teachers, go for number one. Thank you. Student-centered learning still continue? 
uh, student-centric, student means that, that it's, it's centered around the students. The plan is centered around the students. Keeping the students in their home school, uh, with their neighborhood friends, and, and, and in a smaller setting. But four schools can still do that. Four schools will still do that, yes. yes. It, was the, it was the larger schools and the other plans that would take that away. This is Michelle. So I would. Gotta wait for Um I heard a lot of people in favor of status quo. To be honest with you, was very initial when first we presented this. That was kind of the one I kind of went, no, I want status quo because I want to do something to improve what we have. What I want to know now is, given the option of option three, what do they need to do the four existing buildings? But without considering a pathways programming, would some of the people that are in favor of option one be in favor of option three? Yeah. Thank you. Exactly goes to the point where 
we the board has to look at the options and the answers that we have gotten from our consultants and the input from the public and then look at what choices we want to na maybe narrow down to or modify before we look at narrowing down. So I'm looking for some input from the board as to specifically what changes or modifications you'd like to see as a group so that we can explore those. Mrs. Cassell. So one thing um, I think we need can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, one thing I think we need, especially for both me and for the public, um, are the limitations that we face. I'm, I'm directing this to Dr. Renzo and, and uh, administration. Uh, what are the limitations that we, tr we face that need, really need to be communicated so that people understand if we don't make some physical changes to our buildings, what are we limiting ourselves in? What are the programs that can't move forward? Uh, so I think that's education that we all need before we can make a decision as to whether or not true renovation is required in order to make sure that we are meeting the needs of the children. See signs raised about keep students first. That's absolutely what we're trying to do here. We want to make sure that we in Wallingford are giving our kids the best education possible. And I just want to make one other public statement. This bothers me a lot. When you see in the paper the um, test scores in comparison, comparing us to other towns, please keep in mind, if you don't pull back the onion, you have no idea what's being compared or how each of those towns are being getting, getting to those, those figures. They may not actually arrive at them at the same way that we do. We are all inclusive here in Wallingford. Every student's record is in those numbers. That's not necessarily true in every town. So when you see those figures, please keep that in mind. <laughs> and the other point I make is that is just one facet of educating our children. Just one, those test scores. There's a lot more that goes into teaching and learning. All right, uh, getting back to options and what we're looking at. This is okay. Yes, um, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, that's okay. Um, I'm just wondering for the consultants, um, a question for them. So I, I am definitely getting a flavor um, listening tonight that option three. If we, were, if, if we were to modify uh, that option by eliminating the pathways concept and just, uh, not just, but renovate all four schools as new, does the pathways component add a significant uh, cost to it? Or I, I, I wouldn't imagine it does, but I, I don't want to make an assumption that's erroneous. <coughs> No, to, so to your question, construction, construction is construction. Uh, you would still have the same programmatic items in the classroom, either of the buildings, such as the main items, such as science, or engineering components, or any STEM components. Those would just be proportionally divided across all four of the schools. So that work in terms of cost of social construction really the same across the board and all four of the schools. So what I think I'm hearing from the public is um, the idea of the pathways, um, what is, and again, I, I, I want to make sure I'm understanding this correctly, is the, the pathways piece is not appealing because what I'm hearing, I believe, is that you like the idea of your neighborhood schools. It, you continue on with those same group of kids, with, whether it's on the east side or the west side, and that's the appeal of that um, keeping in that path of, you know, if you're at, if you're at Dad, you go to Lyman Hall, if you're at Moran, obviously you go to Sheen, unless you personally, as a family, make a decision you want to change your high school based on a curriculum like maybe taking German or Latin or something like that. But, 
Um, but idea of keeping our, that, that pathway based on our addresses, if you will, are consistent. That's, I think, I think that's what I'm Further questions or remarks from the board? <coughs> Mr. Ross? Yeah, uh, my opinion, I, I, I can no way vote for alternative four, five, or six. As far as I'm concerned, they're off my table. Uh,
it, it, it depends upon how you do the construction. Of course, you have to look at the debt service over 20 years and so forth, but it would uh, eliminate the transportation costs. Mr. Hoffman said it's $700,000 a year in transportation over 20 years. Well, you, it would be a non-recurring cost the first year. You're not, you're not transporting the second year, the third year, the fourth year. Right. You're eliminating that transportation for alternate three because you're not doing the theme. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions or comments or anything else? Okay, Mr. Okay. Yeah, thanks. I, 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 I'm not sure why this is close on the point, but I just want to make sure that it is, I want to underscore it, that under option three, um, we, we would potentially, we are going to be in all four schools as the new. Well, how does that look for, we don't have a swing space. We don't have, um, what, what, how does that, where do we put our students while we're renovating, like you, in that scenario? Yeah, it's, a common, it's going to be a complicated uh, construction sequencing, and we need further study to determine how we can sequence and phase that, especially over time. Uh, I think it would be very challenging to try to renovate all four schools at one time. You can put the 11 schools, but that was a very small piece that you were touching. A project of this scale and the ability to uh, study this and phase the construction scenario. Uh, the good thing is there is some swing space, but it's minor. Uh, and so it's a challenging proposition to do. Um, so you really do need to study that alternative. Alternative 3 obviously has the largest construction costs, but also the complexity of phasing really needs to be adjusted uh, because it does have an effect education over the time in that construction. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate that, but I, I think that really is a really important point uh, for our families um, and the potential disruption and for our faculty. Um, you know, I guess that is extremely disruptive and, and you might actually end up needing temporary spacing depending um, which actually could potentially increase your costs if that's the case. I, I'm not saying it would, but that's something to consider. Would you agree? I would agree. That would be swing spacing area uh, is, uh, is traditionally done in uh, projects of this scale. There is an up cost that goes along with that because you need to build relocatables or supportable classrooms to make that happen. The state does recognize that there's a version for that, but essentially what you're doing is you're building a space like new, you can sprinkle that, you can make it ADA accessible, and you're keeping it for a very small period of time. So you have to contemplate whether or not that enabling phase is worth the project or do you need begin to build this over time in, in smaller phases, but that also has an impact on the overall construction because duration increases. So it really needs to, as you get into that phase, further analysis needs to be done to determine whether or not that really is the best approach. Yeah, and that's what I really want the message um, to caution on what that could look like. And you, you probably as an alternative is maybe considered during like the two middle schools first and then maybe the two high schools or one middle school, one high school. Yeah, I mean, do two at a time rather than all four simultaneously. Is that one way of looking at it as well? Taking on a construction project for four schools all at one time would be, I'm not sure um, there's many districts who have uh, done that. And, and that, again, I just wanted to come to hear that. Um, I couldn't think so. And that, so again, that would be, that would uh, prolong um, the construction project probably pretty significantly. And I'm sure our neighbors in area can talk about what they did to high schools uh, sure. in terms of recent experience and yeah. some of the lessons learned from that. Yeah, good point. Thanks. Mr. Bottom. Um, I certainly agree. We don't do all four schools at the same time. Um, I was around when we did the 12, 11 schools and I was crazy. It was too much of my time. Um, my concern is, I, I think 
one of our objectives should be, and it is to narrow this down uh, to a couple of alternatives, to get the tweak, whatever, um, any of them. But we really don't know to what extent the renovations would be to any of the four schools. And that's why I believe I commend to you said earlier, we'd have to dig deeper once alternatives are decided um, and we get the okay from town council and mayor that we could continue to proceed. And that's when we dig, dig deeper, is that correct? So we really don't have definite costs at this point because we really don't know to what extent renovations are needed, say, at Sheena as opposed to Lightning Mall. So we're kind of in a quandary here on what we're going to have to decide tonight, or we don't have to decide tonight. Um, but getting all this input, I, I, on another note, let me just digress for a second. I mean, is everybody, in, um, can I ask a question on the board? Is, are people in agreement that we need two middle schools instead of one? Making sure, I think Mr. Ross, you might have, I don't remember who, so I apologize if I'm misspeaking. But do we want to, when we look at that and we have the consultants look at that, do we want both schools to mirror program identically? Where that means that we'd have Cook, we would have Cook's table at both high schools, we would have CNA at both high schools, we would have advanced manufacturing at both high schools. I just want to make sure because that's very different. And that, Ads and, I, and, I, and I, I think that brings up one of the one of the opportunities for further discussion because um, I know that we're very fortunate. Sheen has an emerging family consumer science program with a new teacher who's doing a fantastic job, and I know she wants to continue to grow that. So I know that might be a question as we come forward. Do we do we look at neuro programs? I know uh, the certified nursing assistant program. We're looking to add um, potentially pharmacy tech. Um, so, you know, do you mirror that at both schools? So those are the questions I just think the consultants as well as central office would need guidance on when you talk about space. And Ms. Costello, you asked the question, well, what does it mean for programs? We don't have the ability to add a cook's table at Sheehan, um, never mind expand the cook's table at Lyman Hall because of sheer electrical constraints we have. Um, the voltage and the, the, the amps and everything, the area, are, are not at capacity to allow us to expand that. So I just need a little guidance there because I know I have a homework assignment, uh, which will not be done by Monday, just telling uh, But the thing is that I, I just want to make sure I'm answering the right questions and, and maybe certain that we're going to provide you with the correct information. This is Costello. Thank you, Dr. Nelson. Yeah, exactly. I think that's what people need to hear. You have to know. What are the constraints we're up against? I didn't know there was an electrical issue at, that is for a reason you can't see on the uh, coast cable at my Yeah. Yep. That's the kind of stuff. I, I, learned, I learned that during the budget process this year, as we're all being issued budget, Mr. Deptula, um, I said, well, just add an acre. Why can't you just add an acre that we got the grant for? And he's like, well, because I need to upgrade you know, uh, the extras for the extra uh, equipment that needs to be added. Um, the buildings, and again, that goes back to the, the renovation that everybody you know, talks about, the $70 million renovation at that time that brought the schools up to the electrical um, future, so to speak, capacity. But we've now, and Mr. Ritula, I'm sure you can expand this, but we've ex exceeded in some areas the, the ability um, because of just sheer added technology, um, having the technological environments that we did. So, um, I think I, I think I better understand, and I know where to go if I have questions. But I think I better understand what we want to do is kind of make both high schools look identical in terms of programs. But then also, I think the second tier is to look at because again, and down the line, the reason why I bring that up is because down the line, you, you know, while you're going to train one, you're going to trade one option or one problem for another. Because if you expand program for culinary. You're going to have students who are going to want to be bust over for that unless we go to a pathways model. So that's what I'm just saying. You have to balance that. 
which I'm trying to do. This is for self. Could, could we possible have like a 3A and 3B, 3A, keeping the high school programming similar to what is going on now and just renovating the buildings? And we, we, we have, okay, so that's what I was just saying. And I, I appreciate the really applause. Um, because that was exactly what I was saying. I was going to do A, keep the exact same way it is, and part B, which was to do apples to apples, to give you the comparison and then work with the consultants who have the math to tell that story. Further comments. So what I'm hearing is that we have a number of um, new ideas that have come up this evening, and we've had some great input from the public. And I think we have additional questions that we need to pose to our consultants so that we can get those answers moving forward um, before we are ready to uh, send the alternatives down. Uh, but I don't want to speak for all board members. Please correct me if I'm wrong. This is okay. I, I think you're right, but I think also, um, based on the conversations I'm hearing tonight, I, I can't speak for the board members, but I'm wondering if we can eliminate maybe two options. And I, from a procedural standpoint, that may not be allowed. <coughs> I'm sorry, excuse me. May not be allowed for this evening, but um, we do have a meeting, our televised meeting, um, monthly televised meeting is next Monday. And if I'm wondering if we would consider putting on the agenda a, 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 an action item that would allow us to potentially eliminate um, two options. I have not heard anybody really talking about what I'm thinking is I didn't really hear much talk about option four or five. And I'm wondering if we can eliminate, um, and we can do it tonight, but um, if we put it on, on our agenda for next Monday's meeting, that would give board members the opportunity to either say, yeah, they go, yeah, let's eliminate those, or no, frankly, I'm not going to eliminate those. All right, just informally, perhaps we can ask board members if they would be interested in having that um, on the agenda. And we'll start with Mrs. Raggio. I would be fine with eliminating four and five and having that on the agenda for Monday. Have you me too. Uh, me too, but I. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> me too, but it's now the time also to maybe add the uh, two middle schools. That's, well, you could add yeah. three. Okay. Just so I throw that in there, but I'll eliminate it for we, we can We can certainly we can discuss that. Well, let's just see if there's an appetite for um, these two. I have an appetite. <laughs> <laughs> on that but of course on the agenda. This is okay. Yeah, um, oh well yeah I would say I yes but also and I don't want to complicate others but what Mike said with option three it was talked about thinking of three A and three B that might also be appropriate um, if, if that works for you guys and from a timing perspective but also something for the board to consider. So yes. 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 I do say the option to support eliminating four, five, and six. Yes, I do. Or comments or something, some 
Mrs. Brasco. I think Mrs. Corso asked about having option six or two middle school for not seeing. I, I didn't hear that. Yeah. The acoustics in here are very difficult. Is that better? Could you say it again, please? Sure. I thought Mrs. Corso asked about option six with one high school, two middle schools. Oh, okay. Thank uh, you. Okay. Yep. Were <laughs> there are other ideas that we'd like to have fleshed out by the <coughs> consultants? Mr. Bada? What about the point of adding um, two middle schools to the agenda on the 17th? Like we did with the 183 and 4. No. No, it wasn't. I mean, what, what? 4 and 5. Oh, I'm sorry, what did you say? Just the idea of having two middle schools instead of one. I don't know, that's, that doesn't have to be part of any alternative, it just has that. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. Is that right? Well, we're not sure about the rest of number one, number six, so that's why I'm so number six. I just want to, I just want to, I, I would like to see the board make a decision like we just did to eliminate four and five. Well, we to make it, well, all right, to put it on the agenda to do the same thing with the idea or the concept that we still have two middle schools. That's all. Yeah. And insert that word we have to insert it in any way. Yeah, yeah this is a separate motion. You just do a separate motion on the night that the board is, it is going to maintain two middle schools. Right. Period. For Monday night. Yeah. So, so um, in my mind, um, and just for the public's sake, the way I would think the um, agenda item would be for Monday is that, you know, um, discussion and possible action. So that way, it's a general one that we can flush out as a board specifically what components of that would be appropriate. Yeah. Um, like to make it, if, if, the board, if it's the board's pleasure to say that whatever plans we choose, we, won't, we, we can commit to two, yeah. to two middle schools. Right. And that's that, so, but that, we don't need to get specific, um, even, even when you guys, if anybody looks at our agenda for next Monday, it won't be specific like that. It will just say, um, in my mind, the way it will be, um, is somewhat like just discussion and possible action towards um, all these ideas. So it will be, be very broad. <coughs> Further questions or comments by the board? All right, for, um, we had a couple of hands, so we'll just quickly, if there are quick remarks um, from the public, who will entertain them very quickly, and then close. Yes? I just wanted to say very quickly in regard to the high school, really it's about East versus West, or Lyman Hall versus Sheen, it's about big versus small. Everybody seems to agree about the middle school, but why our high school is not as important. A smaller community as well, not just middle school. Thank you. Anyone else have a very quick comment before we close? Yes, sir. If you could come up to the microphone, I hate to get filmed, but so that everyone. I can project really well, though. <laughs> So in line with what you're doing then, uh, would you want to potentially add to next week's agenda to eliminate alternative two, because that would be only high schools and not middle schools? And just kind of think about it a little bit. We'll have to, thank you for the suggestion, we'll have to see about that. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I have three year old which it sounds like yeah, some of the folks that have gotten up already have given their name and address. Oh, sure. Um, my name is Jennifer Marrero. I live on South Main Street. Um, I have three year old twins, which, based off of what I know of construction.
action sounds like at least a five-year projection until a decision is made and then potentially five to eight years of actual construction by the time you finalize everything, my children will be in high school. So I'm, I'm interested to know why you feel that it's a, it's a solid point that we need to middle schools, but why that transition from middle to high is less dramatic with a big I myself had mental health issues going through high school in my Hall. And with a smaller population, I was able to, you know, feel more comfortable in groups and get the attention that I needed so that I could be a productive member of society. So I'm very interested to see in I'm interested to hear your response and why a definite to middle school is so much better than a definite to high school. Yeah. I'll briefly comment on that, just if I may. Um, first of all, I'm not personally um, distinguishing between the small environment for either. All I am suggesting that I have to look at, because that was my homework, is the programming. Because at some point, you can't replicate programming at both schools at the same level. So that's the only concern. Like, robotics is very, very popular at both high schools. Um, and so that's, I'm just cons those are my only concerns. Right, so it's, it's, um, it's not so much program-wise, it's population-wise. I totally get it. Yeah. So there might be some future decisions, if, and, and this is something that's a real scenario, not necessarily five years from now, ten years from now. There might be real different decisions as to whether or not if you stay with the two high schools, which again, I understand the small environment, I'm not describing that whatsoever. If we maintain the two smaller high schools, and who knows, maybe there'll be an influx and Jobs will come to Connecticut and we won't have to even have a discussion. Um, but if you do at that point, then we do have to still look at at some point whether or not we can maintain offering as many offerings at those schools. Today we were at a function and some of our high schools were there. Our high school students were with me and Ms. Latour and we were sitting at Old Seabrook High School. Old Seabrook High School, because it's so small um, and because of the decisions they made, they only offer French and Spanish. Those are the only two languages they offer. We offer French, Spanish, Italian, Latin, German. So those are some things not for today. I want to borrow problems for, from, for, from tomorrow for today. But those are some things that as we look into the future, and that's part of our role, is that you have to make sure that you're thinking about those things too. But again, I'm not looking to borrow problems that we don't have right now. But that's one example where it does become challenging. So bear with me, I'm new to this process. When we finalize the option, will there be another open session? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is just the beginning of a long term. And, and there will be a survey of the community. So we're trying to be as open and transparent and have as much input as possible. Thank you. Hi, my name is Dr. Robin Gray. Welcome to the Panel Line Group. The first one to make the recommendation to one high school. In any event, I'm going to give a 23 minutes to arrive to Stila, so I'm going to have to here. And I'm going to the principal and the diplomas. I've been paying for it ever since. Uh, I'm choose the yellow format here, but I have yellow cities all over, including my name, so I'm going to put that in my hand. I'm an adjunct professor at Free Deck University. I teach uh, for the MIT program. Okay. Dr. Hanwell, you can just get a little closer because we're having trouble hearing. That's okay. I teach uh, in the MIT program where I'm training uh, secondary teachers to uh, teach advising and supervising. Also in the EDL program, which is the leadership department, I teach school finance budgets. Now, let me give you some insights as to what I did my recommendation to the board in 88, 89 to go to one high school. Remember, I was assistant principal, she and I know the building very well. I was principal here, I know the building, I know all the two frames with kids high, I know all the mechanicals, everything about the school. In any event, uh, I did all the enrollment projections. So at the time, we did a 10 year projection, and I saw the curve going down tremendously. And I said to the board, based on that, and some other research I did, that learning, learning one high school, um, nobody wanted to hear that. 
you know, and I'll tell you some things that you're going to confront with when you decide what you're going to decide. Um, I also found out that about 400 at the time of our students who lived in Longer did not come here to our schools. Over 200 of them went to Wilcox Tech. And you can check these figures because I think maybe the proportions are still the same. We had at the time about 200 of them went to Wilcox. We had a bunch of like Xavier, Mercy, State Department, Hamden, Notre Dame, Cho, and um, oh, a couple went there to uh, Hopkins and uh, Hamden Hall. A couple, I think, did self study type of thing. So that prompted me to kind of look into it and say, hey guys, we better be ready. I did not make a recommendation necessarily to close one high school, although it's been screwed that way. I should hire some consultants to take the heat. Um, let's look at some of the other things. Um, Iron Hall High School. I know we have a lot of renovation, renovations here. Well, my experience is if you're living down the crawl space here, the mechanicals are down there. It's an urban floor and there's a lot of electrical conduit. I would not want to be the electrician who's dealing with the conduit with heating and water. So the building is antiquated. Most of it's built on slats, so it's very cold. The architect was in California because it's an open pipe thing. The, the corridors here are ice cold. It was probably recommended when oil was 26 cents a gallon, not a 286 or whatever bid price is. So the, the building, and I know we have a lot of renovations here. I remember as a teacher, uh, my windows were always open at that moment because the controls were just out of control. So we were wasting so much energy. My whole point is that the school, 1957, about 61 years, has seen its time. I was here when we were constructing Seaway. And being those who were some of a handyman, I spoke to a lot of the contractors. And they were outraged that the prices that we were cutting some of the bidding prices, or some of the costs, and they're using the space between the corrugated ceiling, metal, very cold, and a drop ceiling as a return air. Well, what happens when moist air confronts cold steel? Mold. And I don't know if they still have the problem now there, because we have a lot of patients who claim they're getting sick because of mold air. The electric room there, um, when I was talking study walls, the walls were bubbling because of, of the moisture. So the building, I think, is out loose, out loose is useless in spite of all the money you've been pouring in. Okay, let's uh, go back. At the time, 1989, I warned the board not to fill the go back edition here. I said, build it at the high school. During the construction, you add 10 and 20 rooms for overflow, and that's the high school. So all I got hit with, what are we going to call it? What's the mask I'm going to be able to tell us the new uniforms? I knew she wouldn't believe it. But it was politically charged. And you know, I didn't have any answers for all that. I said, this, this is just a recommendation. But I was right and wrong. Um, this Dr. McClay, uh, is there, uh, because Mrs. Purcell is there with his iron arm, and I'm going to go. Okay. Uh, don't have a rush, but I don't know. These are important things that you want to get in front of you. I'm sure. I, 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 I heard a whole lot about scheduling. I scheduled both Iron Hall and Sheen High School. And the nightmare was scheduled for two small high schools. We used to call them singletons. We need one AP now, one AP physics, one of us. And if you didn't want to be using or four numbers, they could. So when we had a large high school, I taught here in the 60s and 70s, we had 1,725 kids in Lima Hall. Without ceiling, okay, and without the wall, a lot of the wall was open, so it can work. We even offered Russian in those days, with the idea of maybe welcoming Chinese because we had such a wonderful, large speed body. Cost. This is the all big one. Now somebody mentioned Southern Now Southern Kent and Lima are very close. As far as demographics, they have eight elementary schools, you have eight elementary schools. They have two middle schools, they have two, high, two middle schools. They have one high school with a wide facility. Their budget is probably close to five million dollars or less than yours. And they have 561 more kids. 
So if the board listened to me, if the town listened to me 30 years ago, all the money that's been spent, millions could have been saved. So we could have a much more efficient high school program. Uh, your risk for people expenditure right now is approximately 17,000 kids, 16,984. It's on the year budget's going to be harder. When you do a budget in September, that April budget in June, you know that. Change transfers over pattern. So you're roughly 17,000 a student. They're at roughly 15 a student, 15,000 a student. So your budget, their budget is roughly 5 million less than this. 4 million 700,000. So the economy of savings, in terms of money, and in terms of efficiency in high school programming, there's no, there's no choice. You can't run two small high schools where you're going to be efficient. Now, I know one of your recommendations, this, this, is, this is highly politicized for you guys. I understand that. So your job is to try to come up with four or five situations that the public might buy. They can go buy any of them because they want the status quo. So if you're going to make a decision, you want to save people money, you want to have a more efficient school system, Fight the bull, whatever that is. And I'm not going to get any information, but I do believe one high school. Now, people talk about athletics and sports. When I was principal, or before then, the Thanksgiving Day game was Cheshire. It was a very high competitive game because we only have one high school, all our athletes played the line and all, so it was a high competitive game. More of the sports is never going to be able to compete with people in Cheshire and some of them. Yeah, maybe. Uh, we're all up. Yeah. The, the thing is that, and the other thing about athletics, for one high school, you have a full freshman program, full JV program, and a full varsity program. Right now, you've got 14 year old freshmen, but you have an 18 year old 145 pounds. That's not healthy. That's not healthy. Whereas one high school, you have 1,700 kids there, or whatever, whatever your population is, you can have a full program for 14 year olds, or playing against 14 year olds. 16 year olds and 16 year olds and 18 year olds and so forth. So, all of those things, all the band uniforms, the mask, and all that, is superficial. But boy, did it bother me now. And that's all they concentrated on is the notion. I have a friend in East Harbor, two high schools, and even East Harbor. They pulled them off, but he had to go through all the nonsense of, you know, this is going to be called, the name is called East Harbor. So, it was, these are some of the things you're going to be confronted with in your decision. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. And this gentleman will be our last speaker, and he's waiting very patiently. I thank you. That's okay. I have a wife and an Alice and Dollar Home. I'm used to waiting for If you could give me your name and house, please. Well, this is Robert Neely. I currently have a daughter that goes to Rand Hill School. I see some girl on past the education school, doing a fine job. She loves school, and she also loves science. And the other night at the table, we were looking at different uh, options. And she noticed that um, STEM is going to be a London Hall. And she expressed a very strong aversion to taking a 45 minute bus ride every day to school. And I really hate to see any, any student or family make a decision about the child's education based on their view. So I, mean, I really hope that we get rid of the, uh, any of the team schools we got the table. That's all I can say. I want to thank you sincerely for your patience this evening. You've been a wonderful audience. Very, it was a very good uh, and respectful discussion, and we look forward to having this discussion continue at our next board meeting next week. Thank you so much.